The shipping industry accounts for nearly 90% of the world's international trade. With 50,000 merchant ships crossing the globe and the biggest vessels holding up to 18,000 containers, packing one is no small feat. The cargo needs to be loaded, taking into account not just the weight, but also what's inside each container. With heavy seas and strong winds testing these vessels, the load must be as stable as possible to help prevent container ships from losing their cargo, or worse, capsizing. Felixstowe is the biggest and busiest port in Britain and moves 3.4 million containers a year. And with six cranes able to move 180 containers an hour, it's like a giant game of Tetris. The challenge is loading your ship so that it stays stable in the water. You take your heaviest cargo, these green ones, and you put them as low as possible in the ship in the middle because that way it'll keep the centre of balance down. And then take any other containers, these lighter yellow ones for example, you can put them wherever you want, at the front like that. You can even pile them on top of the other green ones and that will make sure that your ship remains stable. Steve Griffiths has been working at Felixstowe for 26 years. The challenge for us is the fact that the vessel is 22 containers across and the length of four football pitches. So we have to distribute the weight at the bottom, but also across the centre line and across the length of the vessel. What about hazardous cargoes? How do you cope with them? We have to be very careful about how they're stowed onto the vessels. So from a fireworks container, we wouldn't want to place it under deck, we'd place it on deck, but make sure it's protected by other containers as well. I want to see firsthand what it's like. So I'm going to be loading this one show container onto that ship. But first, I need a lesson because, well, you know, I don't want to break anything. Kevin Harris has been working this dock for 30 years. The hardest thing for you will be stopping the swing of the spreader. So the whole thing's going to sway? The whole thing will sway like a pendulum. And as an operator, we'll have to stop that pendulum allowing you to land on the container, pick the container up, place it onto the vessel in a safe manner. Right, OK, that sounds slightly tricky. How long do you normally take to train someone? About 20 days. Simulation and environmental. So we've got, what, two hours, something like that? That'll be fine. <laughs> That'll be fine, you say, <laughs> confidently. <laughs> the simulator may look like a giant computer game. However, with actual levers and multiple screens, it does give a real perspective on how to use one of these cranes. But the thing is, now I've got to do it with real containers, 134 feet in the air, and I have a feeling that this is going to be significantly more difficult. Kevin is joining me, which is easing my nerves, especially as we head up to the top. Oh, and then we go around. I'm significantly more nervous. As I lower the spreader, I need to precisely match the locks on each corner of the container to activate the twist lock mechanism. OK, here we go. There we go. I have the one show in my hands. As soon as we go past the blue box, yeah. you can actually start to lower off gently. Clenching my toes. It's probably not time to go down a bit now. Yeah, you can start to layer off. There are also twist locks attached to the bottom corners of the container, and they must be guided in with complete accuracy. Woohoo! Get there. That's me. Every time you buy something that was made in China or America, and in fact, pretty much anywhere except the United Kingdom, it's probably been shipped in one of these containers. And the logistical problem of getting it from the manufacturers to your hands is enormous. But one of the key steps is people in the cabs of these monster cranes, 135 feet off the ground with pinpoint accuracy. 